Let's get things started in the heavyweight division in about scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Chicken. You know the rules. Respect my orders. Okay. Good luck. And go to your corner. Well, Joe, I think there's going to be some power on display in this fight. Yeah, we're going to see what Tui Tupo can do with that judges, big size. Judges, time, first round, fight. All right, if I needed to tell you, Tui Topo is in the black trunks, white gloves. Look at that low kick. Nearly swept him out of the ring, Joe. Yeah, you can see those heavy punches and kicks he's known for. Even his little probing light shots are powerful with that size. For Mitrich, he's going to have to get inside, and when he gets inside, he's going to have to unload with some good combinations, but he's got to watch out for counter shots. If I'm Mitrich, maybe the first round, you just kind of mail it in and let this guy gas out a little bit. Yep, try to get inside. A lot of good fainting for Mitrich would be good, trying to get Tui Tupo to throw something. But the calves of Tui Tupo are almost the size of Mitrich's quads. <laughs> Mitrich is a big guy, don't forget. 267 pounds. Oh, nice body shot. Yeah, Mitrich needs to throw that overhand right. I think once he starts getting inside, dipping in, a perfect punch for him. Well, there's plenty of space to hit Tui Topo. Yeah, you see Mitrich, the jab to the body. That usually is the overhand right setup. 11 inch reach advantage for the man from New Zealand. Yeah, I like that strategy for Mitrich to keep chopping those legs. Maybe some good calf kicks. Tui Tupo is big bringing right hand. That one caught him. He got him again. Tui Tupo. Yeah, he's bringing a technical boxing style, trying to pull counter, using the jab to set up the power. Good body kick there for Mitrich. Yeah, that's got to be Mitrich. Tui Tupo is not blocking any low kicks, so if Mitrich can keep chopping away at the leg, the tree may fall. <laughs> Big old oak tree. <laughs> I'm assuming that's one of the bigger trees we know. I just saw a glance up at the clock from Tui Tupo. That's not good. That big size, big power, but it takes a lot of energy to fuel that big body. Oh, what a knee. Mitrich lands a left that grazed off the temple. Ooh. He's just trying to open up with body kicks and overhands. Oh, just missing was Tui Tupo. It's been a good opening round for him, but how much can he continue this? Already heavy breathing. Oh, Tui Tupo's first low kick there. Oh, Mitrich landed a big right hand there. With about seven seconds to go, so so some somentum for Mitrich. Just trying everything, anything overhand, he's throwing it. Here's a little more about the man nicknamed Titan. His powerful punches are considered his signature strike. A two-time King of the Ring eight-man tournament winner, Joe. So of his nine professional fights, six of them have been in tournaments. Yeah, and I mean, for him as a big boy to fight multiple times at night is pretty impressive. We have the Serbian, Strahinja Mitric, Straha, known for his high kick, which is He's trying, maybe his body kicks are the high kick tonight, You're but right. uh, he's good at mixing levels with his kicks. And he's uh, a Ferrari lover. So some of the highlights, you can see really Mitrich trying to paw the jab to get overhands, but a lot of Tui Tupo's inside low kicks to start off, but you can see the big swing and punches from both gentlemen, but the size difference intense, but Mitrich is doing good so far at weathering the storm. Second round time. See what he can do in the second round. Tui Topo flew here from New Zealand, Joe. That's about a 24-hour travel day for someone as big as he is on a plane. Hopefully he got a first-class seat. Otherwise, he needs two seats, probably. 
It's like imagine I, sitting beside him on oh, the plane. Geez. It's like yeah. Andre the Giant. He couldn't even go into the bathroom back in the day. They, they bring a bucket to him to pee in. That's not a joke. Here are the judges' scores for the first round. Two giving it to Mitrich. One, or three rather, to Tui Topo. Yeah, I found Tui Topo was a little bit better with his boxing being first, but there's definitely some momentum gaining from Mitrich, especially as the round progresses. But nice, there's those head kicks he's known for. I've noticed that Tui Topo winces and closes his eyes every time a punch comes his way. I guess you don't recommend that. Well, he's probably so tall, so he kind of leans back a lot. So it's kind of, uh, he's got to get his hands up though. Mitrich is getting closer and closer with these overhands. You can see when you're tall like that, you can do those kind of rolling and it's very hard to hit someone very tall and elusive. Did you like fighting fighters that were shorter than you, the same size or bigger than you, generally speaking? Uh, usually a little bit taller because I know they want to keep the reach and I can chop the legs really easy, so yeah. Most people were slightly taller. Boy. Tui Topo's output has completely evaporated as Mitrich picks up the pace. Yeah. And again, he's glancing up at the clock, Joe. Yeah, labored jabs now. There's not as much pop in it. Oh, strikes. big right hand. I told you, Mitrich is coming with these overhands. Now he's setting them up with the low kicks. That's the strategy. Jab, low kick, jab, overhand. Boy, it just for Mitrich to try and move that big fella around has got to be a laboring. Yeah, trying to escape the clinches, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, right now, Tui Tupo is just a standing punching bag. Yeah, just content staying in the corner, moving his head, maybe trying to counter. But Mitrich needs to be careful with these spinning backs. Yeah. They're so close in range. It seems like there's so many more easy targets. Like yeah. those legs are just, they're waiting to be destroyed, right? Yeah, I mean. And the body. Keep chopping away at the, the legs would be my strategy. And then mixing that overhand. Oh. Yeah, Tui oh. Tupu's done. Yeah, the good and the bad of though being big and strong. But then again, Joe, if he kept connects with one of those punches. Even if he's out of gas, he can put you out. Yeah, especially if Mitrich is walking in, but nice check for Mitrich in that low kick. Well, not hard to judge this round. Stop. Fight. Stop time. See already, Mitrich trying head kicks, getting inside, throwing that overhand. He's finally connected a little bit more in this second round with it. Been loving that mix up with the low kick. I think that's got to be his strategy going into this third with Tui Tupo being exhausted here. Chop away the legs, mix those head kicks. Very impressive. Remember, Tui Tupo six foot nine to get head kicks there. Very impressive. Well, Joe, if you have a fighter in your corner who's completely gassed out, what's yeah. the pep talk? Well, usually I would say the first thing I say is don't try to hit hard. Just keep touching, you know? Once you start trying to overthrow and try to knock someone out, it's exhausting. Just touch, just touch. Take some power off your shots and just try to be busier without mixing the power in. It's an easy way to hide the, the fatigue. They exchange low kicks, no doubt about that round. All five scoring it for the Serbians. The fight's still in play, though. Yeah. A little bit of energy from Tui Tupo with that uppercut. Maybe he was just taking the second round off, Joe. I doubt that, but it's all right. I'm just <laughs> well, there, 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 there he is. Oh, Yeah, yeah this, that, this is what Mitra should just do, yeah, right? Yeah, look, and he's, he's hobbling every time now. Just, I'm telling you, these calf kicks would be a great option. This, that strike everyone's talking about. Man, sitting on that plane for 24 hours is not going to be a fun flight home if Tui Tupu can't figure out a way to get back in this. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, even if uh, 
Tui Tupu just kind of throws his body behind. There's enough power to put Mitric out. You know, we're criticizing David's... <laughs> David's uh, lack of gas, but how about Mitric, Joe? He's showing a lot of good cardio. Yeah, he's chipping away. He's not... He did what he's doing what I kind of told you. He's not over trying to throw things. He's just being consistently touching, which again scores well. He's the busier fighter. He's setting things up, being able to counter now. Just controlling the output, control the gas tank. I've never seen a fighter look at a clock more than Tui Tupo is doing right now. Yeah, it's uh, the reaction when you're tired. Or he's just genuinely curious about what's happening. <laughs> right, right. Maybe he's got somewhere to be after, who knows? Deep breath from the big fella. He's got to rally here with 60 seconds to go. Yeah, maybe try a counter punch, something. But Mitric's got to keep chopping away. Especially when Tuo Tupo pulls his head back, the legs open. Like right now, just behind those punches, mix that kick. Well, Tui Topo came and saw and did not conquer Joe. He is yeah. dead man walking. That's it, 25 seconds. Mitric now just chop, chop, chop. Keep going at it. Oh, he's been saving up the energy for that right hand and he missed. Another glance up at the clock. Mitric just nitpicking him to death the last two rounds. Loves that. There was a kick. There you go. Oh, a little bit of energy oh. there. Too little, too late, or so it would seem, from David Tui Tupo. As Straha picks things up in rounds two and three. Yeah. Big boy. Conserving, wasted too much energy. I'm telling you, there's a, a benefit to being big, and there's a disadvantage. We just saw it there. The decision when we return to Holland. Welcome you back to the prelim fights as we get set for Glory 84 and heavyweights in our opener. Yeah, we saw one of the biggest boys that we have in heavyweights, David Tui Tupo, take on Strahinia Mitrich in a tougher fight. We saw Tui Tupo gas out and Mitrich slowly pick things up, looking for big overhands and just continually whipping low kicks, trying to get high kicks and spinning back fists. And it took him into the second and third round to get really comfortable, get on the inside, and mix in the strikes, playing with Tui Tupu a little bit. But ultimately, he had to work his way on the inside for those big power shots. Let's look at our strike count. Kicks 70 of 74. That's outrageous. Tui Tupo, 71 of 138 with the punches. And you can see the drop off from the opening round to the second round and finally to the third round for the big New Zealander. Doesn't seem like he did enough. But let's find out. Go into the ring and Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's look at the totals from our five ringside judges. Three judges score them out, 29, 28. 
The two remaining judges have it 30-27. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Strahinia Mitri! I'm here with your winner, Straim Yamitrich. Congratulations on your glory debut. Give me your thoughts on your, your fight and how you're feeling today. Thank you, folks and all. I would like to thank you to my opponent and his team for a really, really good match. Uh, to glory for the opportunity to fight inside this organization. Uh, I'm very glad and happy that I make my debut and first victory. That will be short. And <laughs> I would like to say, I expect that we will come to Serbia to Trabzici in Pivo. You fought one of the biggest heavyweights in the division. How was that challenge for you? You started off with overhands, low kicks. Give me your thoughts on fighting a big boy like that. Really, really bad uh, big boy. It's hard to, to reach him, his, his head. I tried to everything. I think that it will be a little bit easier for me, but it's not easy job to fight someone big like David is. All right, so you've seen her first performance. How would you rate your performance tonight for us? Ah, not bad, but I can do much, much better. I hope that you will see soon for the next time. All right, well, congratulations on your glory debut. Your winner, Strahinja Mitrich.